Welcome back guys to the Bayside Fabrication YouTube channel. Okay, so uh, I am scheduled to pick up a new motor on Tuesday. Um, there's a JDM in Porter in Orlando and uh, we're just gonna get a nice low mile JDM motor and fingers crossed that's gonna be uh, a solid unit. If not, they have warranties. And it was $400 more than this piece of crap junkyard motor I bought. So this is what I'm doing. I'm pulling off all the accessories because the JDM motors are different. The alternator bracket, uh, pretty much this whole assembly here is all different from the USDM versus JDM uh, setups. So I'm gonna pop this off um, and uh, just you know clean it up and everything for when we have to swap that over. And in the meantime, I think I know what happened with this motor and I'm gonna try to confirm it right now. But the theory is, and I ran it by a bunch of people and a bunch of you guys actually commented on the last video and also kind of agreed with me that what I think and what we think happened is that the clutch on this um, setup, it engages within like the first quarter inch of you pushing the clutch pedal. Like as soon as, you, like the pedal's really high, let's say. So as soon as you go right here, the clutch starts engaging. Well, there's this much play on the clutch, let's say. So essentially we engage and then we don't need to go any farther, but the clutch can go to the floor. So what we all think is happening or happened is that that clutch uh, amount of uh, play and movement actually was just ramming the, uh, the, the clutch, the flywheel, and in turn, the crankshaft to the rear of the car. Um, and it was just putting all that pressure on it. And it kind of makes sense, because if you think about it, when it finally locked up, I was at a thousand RPM and I was, I literally just pushed in the clutch to, to downshift in the first and make a turn. And that's when the car died. So it died as soon as I pushed in the clutch as well. Um, also, I mean, this is a junkyard motor. There's a lot of, I mean, the bores are all jacked up looking. Anyways, long story short, I think the, um, the fix to this is just to add a clutch stop. I really do. So we're going to, uh, just see what these, uh, we're gonna pull the main caps off right now and see what the thrust bearings look like because the thrust bearings are what the issue is. Now, the thrust bearings uh, prevent, you know, back and forth movement. So we're gonna see what kind of play is in here and uh, we're gonna pull out these thrust bearings and see how they look. All right, guys, check out what I just found. So I was just checking the uh, crank and everything. You know, it's weird. It actually spins really, really easy which makes me a little bit nervous that it may not be the thrust bearings and maybe something else, uh, especially because I just found this. These bearings are smoked. And look at that. They actually got in between the side here. So this one is really bad. It wasn't spun but it got crazy. So I'm not sure what's going on. I mean, this spins pretty dang free. I mean, I'm gonna pull these caps off right now or pull the uh, mains and see what's going on. Well guys, I think my theory is a bust already. I was really hoping that was it. But if you look just on the play on this crank, I mean, I have five thousands. So that kind of rules out the whole thrust bearing idea. Must just got started to boil somehow. Guys, I'm thinking Ooh, now it doesn't move at all. Now the pressure's off of it. That's interesting. Interesting. This whole thing's been interesting. Now I can't turn the crank at all. You'd think when all the pressure's relieved off of everything, it would spin super easy. But now I can't even budget by hand, so. Yeah, she got some main bearings here. 
Already looks bad from the backside. Toast. 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 I'm gonna pull this crankshaft out. These were the bearings in question. All the bearings are eight, eight, eight up in this motor. Mains, connecting rods, totally gone. Thrust bearings, actually in really good shape. There's a little wear right there. Barely anything going on here. And when I put my dial indicator on it, it was like a couple thousandths gap. It was nothing to worry about. So it wasn't the clutch and the uh, clutch stop, which I thought it was. This motor just got started with oil. It must have. So gotta think about gotta think about that now. Well, I think we figured out what finally happened. Luke came over last night. We just kind of sat around the garage, uh, staring at this thing, talking about certain things. Luke actually, he put it back together with the bearings just to see what was what. He was in disbelief on the uh, thrust bearing situation, which I don't blame him for because I was convinced that was it. So after the last video, I went online. Everybody was like, guys, it's the thrust bearing. Um, that's gotta be it. It happened to me. They're notorious for this apparently, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, six thousandths is the maximum. Uh, after repeated uh, attempts last night with a dial indicator, we could only get five out of it, five and a half actually, thousand. So it was well within specs. The bearing looked great. That wasn't it. Now, if you guys recall, when I had bought this motor or got it back home from the junkyard, this timing gear here had this little dowel sheared off. Now I didn't think much of it. The engine turned over. I figured, well, something happened. This sheared off. It obviously would put the motor out of timing. Motor shut off. That's probably the end of the story. I don't even know why I didn't think of it. I feel stupid because it's very obvious. This gear also drives the oil pump. So if that dowel sheared off, that means the oil pump stopped turning which means the motor ran at some point for untold amount of time with no oil. Now that could be, you know, if it, if it was running at 8,000 RPMs when that happened, that could be a lot of time for the engine to spin and uh, run itself dry, you know, for, I mean, who knows how long it could have ran. I mean, if it was out of timing, like I said, uh, yeah, who knows? Um, who knows what could have happened, but, uh, the fact is, at some point, this sheared off and stopped, uh, stopped turning the oil pump on this motor. So I believe that this motor wasn't fully cooked, but it was definitely, definitely hurt um, uh, from that event, whatever that event was. Uh, this motor also is, like I was saying, it's a junkyard motor. It had, it could have two hundred and eighty thousand miles on it, for all I know. So. It was kind of silly for me to put this in in the beginning. I should have just bought a JDM motor and you know got all the accessories off of this at the junkyard or something. But I mean, it doesn't matter. Like I said, it was 400 bucks fully dressed. So even you know with a JDM motor, you have to swap over all the USDM accessories. So even just the accessories alone would cost me probably 400 bucks after you total them all up. So not the end of the world. But um, yeah, I kind of wish I would have went that route. But we're doing that now. Um, it's Saturday. I'm picking up a motor on Tuesday and uh, we're pretty much just going to go and just put everything back together and see what, what it does because we're convinced that that's really all that could have happened. Um, and it was just previously hurt and that's kind of the end of it. Uh, all the main journals in the uh, block look great. Uh, the bearings are a little scored up on the mains, but not bad. So this block is actually would be good for a rebuild. Um, there's no cracks or anything like that. Everything looks pretty good. Moving forward, I'm cleaning up all the parts and I also think 
Now I'm gonna check the level. Uh, our, my dipstick comes right into here. And the Skunk 2 dipstick that came with it had three different settings on the dipstick. One for a K20, one for a K24, one for a tilted K24, uh, which this is. And I mean, I don't think that this was an issue, but I guess there is a chance that I could have misread uh, which or misinterpreted which level of the dipstick and maybe run it also a little low at some point on oil, but I don't think that's the case. Either way, I'm gonna open up these baffles a little more um, and just allow for more oil to be able to drain into the front side of the pan here because uh, the motor, uh, the front of the car is this way. So I'm gonna open these up and let uh, a little more oil drain into the sump here. And uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and uh, yeah, we'll just kind of take it from there. But yeah, that's really good. That's really the only thing that we can think of at this point because nothing else makes sense. Um, the car had no timing in it, um, you know, so it wasn't a, you know, a, a issue of, uh, you know way too much timing in it which would essentially you know that would also put a ton of force on the pistons and everything but then you would you know be you'd see detonation on the pistons you would see bent rods things like that we saw none of that and i mean at 10 pounds of boost you know these this thing could hold way more than what was going on there so um that's uh what what we're thinking now oh and also something i noticed which i'm not sure if it's related we'll find out when the new motor comes in is that there was a whirring uh, inside the car. It sounded like the power steering pump. And I was pretty convinced that um, when we first ran it, I had a power steering pump leak and I just ran it low in oil and I thought it might've hurt the power steering pump. However, thinking about it, when I put the, uh, when I got the power steering pump leak fixed, then that stopped the whirring I heard from the power steering pump, like from the outside of the car. So. You know, you look in the engine bay, put your ear up next to the power steering pump, you couldn't hear anything. Once you got in the car though, it was a loud whine like the power steering pump and it went up in revs. It did not, however, change, you know, when you're stationary, sometimes if you have a, a worn power steering pump and you turn the wheel, it goes, you know, it just, it varies in sound and noise. This didn't do any of that. So I'm almost thinking that whirring that I thought was the power steering pump might have actually been the bottom end of this motor saying, hey, I don't have much time left. Um, it, it would make sense and I can't prove it, but I will be able to prove it when I put the new motor in and I'm re-put that power steering pump on. And if there's no whirring, that sounds like a worn power steering pump inside the car, then that whirring came from the, uh, from the motor here. So I'm hoping that's the case because that would definitely in, you know, be the indicator that this thing was not doing okay and uh, we just overlooked that that part of it. So uh, on to just cleaning up the parts. That's all I'm doing now. I'm gonna uh, uh, just get this block off this stand because it's pretty much a uh, paperweight at this point. And we're gonna get the, get the oil pan cleaned up. I'm gonna take the time now to clean up all the accessories, uh, kind of get everything pretty looking and all need grime and gunk off everything uh, from this old motor and just really just start putting everything back together. So um, we're gonna do that, but I think that's uh, I think that's kind of the conclusion of what happened here, guys. So I appreciate you watching. It's just a quick little video here just to kind of go over uh, after, you know, five days of, you know, just kind of thinking about what happened and taking stuff apart. I think that's, uh, that's the final verdict here. So thanks for watching. On the next video, we're gonna go pick up a new motor, put it back together and uh, get it back in this car so we can uh, get back to square one here.